Mahindra Racing's Alex Lin just recently scored his maiden podium finish in Formula E. And he's joining us here today to talk about all things Formula E. Thank you so much for joining us, Alex. That's quite all right. How's everything with you? Everything's going great over here. Hope everything's great there. Yeah, I mean, sunny Monaco and the sun's yeah, not even a cloud in the sky. So uh, life could be worse. Right. Um, let me start off the interview first of all by congratulating you on your first Formula E podium. Um, you've come close in the past before, but uh, what do you think went right in Valencia? Um, to be honest, I think, uh, to be fair, we just capitalised on our potential, which I think we've been showing for a while. Um you know, so many factors need to come together on a formal day to to get on the podium and also to fight for the win. Um, and I think from like you said, we've come very close a lot of times, um, but it was really nice just to to finally get it done and um, show what we can do. Right. And was it a bit of a bittersweet moment for you, though, because uh, you were actually challenging for the win before that incident with Norman Nato? I think at the time it really wasn't. Um, but you know, as you start to reflect, it does. You know, you, you you are a bit sad that you didn't win the race. But I think there were so many things that you know, like the fight back um, once we got hit off the circuit was was really cool, um, and that was important to show a fighting spirit um, and to never give up. That was, that was really yeah, that was really important. And we have to talk about that first race in Valencia. It was quite a bizarre finish. Just nine racers ended up finishing. So what happened over there? Yeah, it's um, to be fair, it's it's it was yeah, obviously now we can laugh about it, but at the time it wasn't it wasn't very funny at all. Um, but in a sense, the the FIA removed a lot of energy, which they are entitled to do via the rules. Um, but in the end, it's quite simple maths that if you've only got five percent of energy left in the car because you're within the last five minutes of the race. And you can remove a percent of energy every minute that you have under full course yellow or safety car. Then guess what? If you remove all of that energy, you're not going to have enough to finish the race. Um, so I think common sense has prevailed now for this weekend. I think there's a slight rule change. So it seems like in the last five minutes that there won't be any energy reduction to save the, uh, the embarrassment that I think a lot of people had on the Saturday race of Valencia. And just coming to your car, the M7 Electro this year, it's featuring an all-new powertrain developed by ZF. Uh, you drove the M6 Electro last year. So uh, how evident have the improvements been? I think very evident. I think um, certainly over the last two seasons, Mahindra haven't, uh, well, haven't had the most efficient car. And uh, now I think we believe we have a very efficient car, um, certainly. And, and again, that was what I think made Sunday's race in Valencia very important because as a team, you know, we passed a lot of fast cars, you know, DS and Nissan, Audi, you know, very fast cars in big manufacturers. And I think to show that was important. And that's just a, the actual culmination of all our efficiency into one. So that, that was, I think, a great, great proof that our car is very efficient now. And as you mentioned, you were really strong in Valencia. You made it to the Super Bowl shootout both times. Uh, but it's also that track's a bit of an outlier because it's a permanent circuit and Formula E is normally racing on street tracks. Uh, so do you think it's the characteristics of the circuit that suit suited the Mahindra car more or do you think the car's just strong throughout? I think we have noticed some trends as a team where um, certainly some characteristics suit our chassis a little bit more than others um but to be honest if anything we've just learned that so now we are aware of changes we need to make um to suit other or different types of circuits but i think it's it's less um it's less the permanent circuit stuff it's more the characteristics because uh, i think in other circuits like Riyadh, we're really fast um also in berlin we're really fast it's, it's certainly it's different types of characteristics that i think show that Right. And what do you think those characteristics are in particular? Um, I think it's more um, the layout. Um, without trying to show our hand a bit too much, it's definitely some... We, we know we know what to improve. Uh, but yeah, without, without making it too painfully obvious, yeah, I can't give that away. Right, of course. Um, you mentioned Riyadh. Uh, you had a really scary crash over there. A um, lot of people in the racing community called it the worst crash they've seen in Formula E history. 
so what was going through your mind during that incident i mean i think there's been a lot of uh, a lot of hysteria since the crash i mean honestly being in it it wasn't that dramatic and i think in the end we see a lot of worse crashes so i think i think there was a lot of drama um that wasn't real uh, so from that side i wasn't thinking anything I was thinking about was the the lost points that we had that day and uh, yeah wanted to move on really yeah it's a great testament to just the progress made in racing safety i think so far yes absolutely um yeah and maybe coming to your teammate what's it been like working with alexander sims it's been really fun uh sims is a great guy uh, i think we work very well together which is the main thing uh we both have a very similar work ethic um and similar understanding uh and i think from our side as a team the big difference we've made this year is just the, the sheer amount of work we put in to bring this team to where it can be and i think that's shown in the results we're not there yet we're definitely nowhere near what we can be um but it's it's a work in progress and certainly i think if we see over the last three weekends um we've really started to show as a team what we can do so and that's um because of both uh, simsy and myself um so yeah it's a great testament to him as well i'm sure going ahead like your next goal is going to be to get that elusive first win um you've spent some time with the team now you seem rather comfortable in the car so how soon do you think that's going to come i think in in formula e you you have to work extremely hard for it um and you can only really go one session at a time i think we have a great potential in the car and i think me as a driver i'm, I'm feel like i'm driving better than ever so confidence is high and we need to use that also focus on on improving because we still we still aren't where we where we can be and until we reach that point that's when um, we can win consistently but i think as a team we're just fully focused on the next session um and as we know in sport you know if you focus on the process the outcome usually takes care of itself uh, so i think that's just where we need to be Right. And we can't talk about Formula E, of course, without bringing up uh, the potential E Prix in India. Um, Formula E organizers have already have already confirmed that India is quite high on the priority list. Um, so, as a driver, what do you think? Why would India be a good fit for Formula E? I think, as a driver, I mean, it's it's more for who I represent. You know, I represent Mahindra Racing, and I think that's that's what makes certainly for us an Indian race very special. um you know and that's it's something that we are very aware of, of what we represent and every team I've driven for you know it's it's bigger than us it's bigger than me as a driver it's it's we're representing everything that um Mahindra stands for and i think that's also very big in india so from that side to have an indian race would be very special um and we'd be very proud to come and um, represent this team in its home country um so yeah i think for me personally it's because of the team i drive for um but certainly just as a spectacle and an event i'm sure it'd be really special uh so yeah if it can happen i'd be really excited yeah i know a lot of fans would be really excited to have it come over here um and yeah you've always mentioned formula e, you've called it a high speed game of chess mm. um it's something that you love so much about the championship um so why do you think formula e continues attracting these high caliber racers because of the prestige of the championship it's a world championship now um the caliber of manufacturers um the caliber of drivers in the end if you have such a big collection of uh, big teams and big drivers in it it becomes a championship to win and um certainly formula e has become that very quickly and drivers such as myself and everyone else on the grid when you know you have, when you have a good day in formula e you're putting a good result it's because you know you've driven and and beaten the best in the world um so that's what makes it special um and of course it's always exciting because you've got 24 world class drivers that all want to win and want to all put it on the line every time um so that usually creates some fireworks Right. And I think when Formula E launched it created this niche for itself of electric racing. And of course now it's not the only electric racing series in the game. You have Extreme E coming in and so on. Um so how do you think Formula E is going to continue to stand apart? I think because of what we just mentioned, actually what it's doing is totally different, you know, electric single seater racing mainly in uh, big city centers. 
I mean, it's it's totally unique still. Um, and the, because it's electric, I think that's not the unique thing about it anymore. Like you said, it's it's everything it stands for, and all of the other messaging that goes along with Formula E, plus the excitement of the show. And we always feel a big responsibility that the show is is very important. We keep on having exciting races, crazy races. It's 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 part of the the attraction of Formula E. Um, and actually, that's the thing that Formula E can do as a championship, other than most other racing championships. No matter if you've got an electric car or a combustion car, it's the excitement that it produces, and that's, in my opinion, what makes Formula E special. Great. Um, and maybe moving on from Formula E, you recently also mentioned that you're returning to Le Mans, this time racing for the reigning LMP2 champions, United Autosports. Yeah. Uh, so how did that deal come about? It came about after... Um, you know, the Aston Martin factory program finished. Um, so then now my attention in sports car racing turned to, I want to win Le Mans overall. Um, so from that, I've managed to win it in class. So that was really special, but now I want to lift the big trophy. Um, so then, yeah, with the new category of LMDH and, and Le Mans hypercar all coming together, it was important for me to, again, show what I could do in a prototype. Um, Cause considering that's where I started my sports car career, and had just a three-year um, three-year break in, in GTs, but now I want to come come back home. To be honest, into a prototype and and try and do that. Uh, and United, like you said, are the reigning LMP2 winners of Le Mans and WEC champions, ELMS champions. They've done it all, and um, for me, it was the the team to drive for. So I I pushed really hard with Richard Dean and Zach Brown to uh, to get that chance, which I'm really happy they gave me. I think this is going to be your first time racing prototype since 2017. So how challenging is it going to be to jump back into that? I actually don't think challenging at all because I feel like it's my home. You know, high-powered single-seaters was what I did um, my whole career and then went into prototypes. Formula E as well is is a single-seater championship. So really, it's only just been three years of um, Aston Martin, really, just in the factory program that's been that I've done something different. Um, so from my side, it's, uh, it's really what I've been used to the whole time. Great. Great to hear that. I think I've covered all I had to cover. Uh, so thank you so much. No problem at all. It's been a pleasure. And yeah, thanks for joining us and wishing you good luck for the upcoming races. Thanks very much. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.